Now Einstein famously said that time and space are modes by which we think and not conditions by which we live. So what do we mean by time? In order to understand this, we must separate how we discuss both space and time. Space is the area around us, the universe, whereas time are moments created within this space, like a series of frames on a film. Although this does assume that time is discrete, moving from one frame to another, but in fact it is continuous, and there are essentially an infinite number of frames between each of these frames. Space is very different and can be measured in discrete quantities, be it meters, light years, and at its very smallest it would be a Planck length. In terms of space, we are free to move anywhere we like, and there are no restrictions on which directions we move in. We have no choice on how we move through time. Space has no rules about what comes next to each other. The laws of physics will not tell you what might happen at one point compared to another point. And there are many things that could happen at each point, only some might be related. Time does have rules. From one moment in time to the next, it is possible using the laws of physics to predict what will happen next. And then at that future point, you could again predict what will happen next, and so on into the future. The reality that we perceive is created in the now moment. When we think of what will happen in the future and what will happen in the past, we imagine this in our head and we think of this as not real. And when we think of a location far away from us, we again imagine this in our head. But we believe that this location is real. Why is this? When we agree to meet up with someone, we give them a location in space and we also give them a specific time to meet. The laws of physics can predict events both in the future and backwards in time. Now eternalism says that all moments in time are all equally real. Time and space are merged like a block. Presentism presents the present as real and the past and the future as not real. And a slight twist on this is where we treat the past and the present as real, but not the future. This, however, is not reflected in the laws of physics. So why do we treat them so differently? It is because we perceive an arrow of time, and this concept comes from the laws of thermodynamics. It gives us an impression that time flows. Our mind is capable of accessing memories only from the past. We can measure time using clocks, and using this we can measure how much time has passed between two events. Our universe is filled with things that repeat at regular intervals. They are predictable, creating a perception of time passing, from the day-night cycle to the ticking of a clock. Our perception of duration of time is not always as predictable. Sometimes we think a lot of time has passed, when in fact not much has passed at all. And we assume that despite our perception of the duration of time, that we all move forward at the same rate through time. Now Einstein showed that this was not the case. Our perception of time is linked to our relative motion, or the strength of the gravitational field around us. The faster our motion is, the slower our clocks will tick. Travel in a spaceship at close to the speed of light, and time will virtually stand still. Now from an observer on Earth, it might well take the ship thousands of thousands of years to reach its destination, but for the passenger on board, it will be a mere blink of the eye. This effect has been demonstrated in subatomic particles. Muons are particles which are created when cosmic rays hit our outer atmosphere, and these intermediary particles are very short-lived and should never be able to reach the surface of Earth. Yet they do. And the reason they do is because they are traveling at relativistic speeds, meaning they experience time slower. Now the real question is, are different parts of the universe experiencing time differently? Or is it us that experiences time? In other words, without humans, would time simply not exist? Does our mind, our consciousness, somehow allow us to experience the universe in a manner similar to a tape or a film? traveling along all the events of the universe that pertain to us, creating the illusion of an arrow of time. 
Are the events of the past influenced by the events in the future? Can we still determine our own future? Now, physicists are still struggling with the notion of what time is and why there is even an arrow of time. At a quantum level, there is a much greater blurring between the past, present and future. And maybe it is here that the answers to understanding how we perceive time might be found. And some scientists have suggested that parts of our brain function at a quantum level and allow us to interact with the universe outside of the concept of time, allowing the future to affect the past. Although there are no clear answers to this as yet, it is clear that our mind, our consciousness, is somehow connected to the very fabric of the universe, either in a way by which the reality we perceive is created through our own consciousness, or that somehow we are able to affect the events in the past from the future. Now, this might all seem a little far-fetched. Consider the simple double-slit experiments. This is carried out in many laboratories across the whole world, and you may even have performed this experiment yourself at school using a laser. And in this version of the experiment, we will be using electrons instead of photons, and the electrons behave both as a particle and as a wave. When they pass through the two slits, they will experience diffraction due to their wave behavior, creating an interference pattern. Now, if we send the electrons through one by one and we detect their arrival on the screen one by one, then you would expect that these particles would not create an interference pattern as they cannot interfere with any other particles. Yet, if we run this for long enough, the same interference pattern is created. And this implies that each particle must pass through both slits at the same time and interfere with itself. Now, if we place a detector at one of the slits, we could find out if the given particle goes through one slit or the other. And when they do this, no interference pattern is created. So the act of observing the particles and in no way disturbing their motion has affected the outcome of the experiment. Even if we move the detector so that it sits behind the slits, so that effectively the particle has already chosen which of the two slits it will go through, it makes no difference. As soon as the detector is placed in the path, the interference pattern disappears. And when we remove the detector, the interference pattern returns. And this implies that we produce the results of the measurements, and this puts an end to what is called objective reality. And John Wheeler famously stated, we become participants in the evolution of the universe since its very beginning. We live in a participatory universe. And many scientists do not agree on how to interpret these experiments, but at some level it is hard for any of them to deny the connection that exists between our conscious mind and the quantum world. So what does this all mean for time? The short answer is that we don't know. Einstein believed that it was woven into the very fabric of our universe, and the arrow of time was created to allow systems to go from order to chaos. For physics, the arrow of time is less important for most situations. It could run backwards, and all the equations would function quite happily. It is believed that from the Big Bang, the universe will start from order and turn to chaos. But if you look at the very early moments of the Big Bang, it really started with an awful amount of chaos, which then tended towards order, only to turn back to chaos, breaking this simple symmetry right at the beginning. We have previously seen that our universe has a way of ordering itself, which really should question the notion of entropy. So where does this leave us? Well, to recap, there are three ways to look at this. The first, time is a construct that we use to see the complexity of the universe, like watching a 2D film and seeing a 3D image. All time exists all at once, and the only way that we can make sense of it is to journey along it like a train. Number two, there is only the now, the present, the future and the past don't exist. They are constructs to make sense of what has been, 
and allow us to predict what might be in the future. Physics favours this option. And lastly, every moment now creates events that exist here and now and in the past. The future does not exist. Now quantum mechanics paints a picture where time exists all at once. And our society and mind tell us that the future does not exist, the present and the past do. And physics tells us only the now exists. The universe is far more complex than we could ever imagine. Our mind and consciousness is linked to this beauty in ways that we are only just starting to see. And we have a very long way to go in order to understand this beauty and mystery. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.